So I talked a little bit about Giannis's comments uh, about walking away in 2020 and speaking to where Zion is. And you both of you think Zion's more physical than mental. But but Giannis talked about this. In 2020, I was ready to walk away from the game. I had that conversation, yes, with the front office. Everybody, no matter where I am, everybody's watching me. I don't think I have the time to turn it off, be myself, kind of just be me. As much as people say I'm handling it well, because that's my personality, it's hard. It's not easy. I gave it a chance. I started talking with someone. Somebody helped put me in a place again to appreciate all of the things that I have that comes with being who I am to be okay with myself. I feel like a lot of people deal with it, but they're not willing to talk about it. They're not willing to improve because the stigma behind it's behind it. I talked to Kevin Love and told him how he inspired me to open up and help me to kind of better myself where he was literally tearing up when I was telling him that. He never imagined he would be the one to kind of help me figure out a way to cope with all of this. All right, I got a few comments for this and then I'm gonna let you let you two respond. I I think that in our I want what I want, how I want, what I want society, we're gonna continue to create people who who operate this way. Uh the hey, I want to play basketball in the NBA make a shitload of money doing it, get my own shoe, be beloved, but at the same time, I want to feel like a regular person. Well, part of feeling like a regular person is not signing quarter-billion-dollar contracts. You know, we 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 don't even sign quarter-million-dollar contracts, uh, most of us, you know. So you get compensated for what you lose in your mental health. Just like jobs that are super risky, you go work uh, on an oil rig in Texas, you you get compensated handsomely for that. So when you come and you say, hey, you're the little mermaid and you want to be part of that world, here's what you do. Give some of that money back. Oh, you know what, dog? You're 6'11". You're 7 feet tall. You're going to stick out in every room that you that you come into and you're a top one, two percent athlete walking the face of this earth. Professional sports is what your body is geared for. So if you want to get the most out of your life, this is probably the, the direction that you have to go. And guess what? It works out that you get paid a shitload of money for doing it and you're damn good at it. Now, I'm saying all of this to say not to dismiss anything that Giannis is going through. And I'm great that Kevin Love, DeMar DeRozan put out what they, what they're going through uh, to the world. So other NBA players, macho men, alpha males could reach out to those guys or just reach out to whoever they needed to get the help that they need. And we see it with Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan has a very small group. He couldn't do much because he's so famous. But what I ask for those people in these situations, especially the basketball players, because they stick out, is what's your alternative? There is a yin that comes with every yang. There's a good that comes with every bad. Yes, you can go work minimum wage at name that place, and guess what? Instead of a shoe being named after you, you're only getting one pair of shoes per year. You know what I mean? Like you're stocking that shoe that could be your shoe. No, you're stocking it, not it being sent to you. So what's important to you? And I know I come off as insensitive, but I really get tired of of rich people, especially rich people who came from nothing, who have afforded themselves, their families, generational wealth, uh, opportunities beyond the eyes can see. Uh, first name relationship with billionaires will eventually be a billionaire and the doors that it opens and you want to talk to me about, hey, man, I, I don't know if I'm cut for this. Well, fucking walk away. Fucking walk away. I know Diddy said more money, more problems. And I believe that. And I believe that we all should probably have a good therapist on standby because we got problems that we don't know how to deal with and cope with. But when you come to me with your white collar problems, when you come to me with your first world problems and we get, but then you want to be an advocate for, for police violence in Milwaukee, you want to say, Hey, I'm here to stand to help poor people out. Well, part of helping poor people out is not bitching about the, the spoils of being rich and famous. 
Sometimes these rich people just need to shut the fuck up and say, guess what? Part of being the best player in the NBA is people talk shit about me all the time. But I go home with a fat wad of money that these motherfuckers would never, ever think about seeing in their life. I could pay off. I pay more in taxes than you will accumulate in debt in your entire being. You remember LeBron in 2011 when he was pretty much like, hey, man, y'all going to go back to y'all shitty ass life and I'm still going to be LeBron James? More people need to take that mentality. So kudos to LeBron. Kudos to Kobe. Kudos to MJ. Kudos to these famous people who are larger than life who have found a way to find normalcy within their life. Hey, Giannis, maybe you pull up to AAU. Maybe you need to have, when your kids get older, pull up to AAU tournaments like LeBron did. Like D-Wade does. Go around normal people and just say, fuck it. They're going to get on my nerves. They're going to be in my space. But I'm going to do this to make myself more available so I don't feel so isolated. I mean, he, he got his brothers on his team because them niggas would not, not, not be on anybody's rosters. He wasn't so far. But, yo, just stop throwing it in our faces that you going through it. Because even though you're going through it and you deserve to get the help, you deserve to get help. You have problems that I'll never understand. You're winning at life, bro. We don't care. We don't care. 